Good morning, everyone. This will be the last, um, not the last video from this workspace because for those who um, need a reminder, tonight is my second heart to heart conversation, honest conversations um, about um, the writing process with John Robbins. So that's my tonight. So for me, it will be 8 p.m. It's 7 p.m. Uh, GMT. And I don't know, it's 1 p.m. for John Robin, who I'll be talking uh, with, and he's he's in the Manitoba Winnipeg time zone. So look at all, but it's it's it, it will be 7 p.m. at GMT, um, so uh, European Central Time, 8 p.m. So it will be 8 p.m. for me. So that will that will be the official last video from this office. And as you as you'll see around me, the only thing I have left here are two reminders to myself, like two affirmations. Um, and my yoga blocks, which I need tonight because my whole office is cleared out by now. Um, just a few boxes left I need to uh, take downstairs. Uh, yay. Hey, Sandra. Um, yay for uh, setting up office um, in the attic. Uh, so I just this morning uh, dragged all my books downstairs, which was a lot of fun. I'll be sore tomorrow. Um, so that is that is uh, tonight, and I, and I need the yoga blocks uh, to set up. Um, to completely lost my train of thought there. Uh, I need the yoga blocks um, to set up my phone because the joint Facebook Live needs to be done um, with a phone. So I need my yoga blocks um, to actually sort of maneuver my phone into uh, staying upright. Uh, that's why they're still there. Otherwise, I would have packed them by now. Um, so today. Um, it's, it's the last, uh, not just the last um, weekly video from this particular office, um, but also it's the last video of the month. And this month we talked about self-care a lot. And today I want to talk about the fact that what we addressed this far is uh, mostly how you can make sure um, that you let, how, how to let others know how they can help you to get like the writing space, uh, the brain space, uh, the room, like literally um, the room to get your writing done. But what we haven't talked uh, about before is that part of self-care can also be to include people in the writing process. I know we, we and there are lots of memes about that and lots of writing quotes about this, that writing itself is a very lonely process, but it doesn't have to be. Maybe parts of it uh, are, depending on who you are as a writer. Some people do the brainstorming um, best just by themselves. If that is you, that's just totally okay. But I'm just going to mention a few ways. Uh, and you can be totally creative here um, as well. Like I hear so many fun, uh, for my clients, I hear so many fun things that I do with their friends um, to keep them stimulated and inspired uh, and to um, sort of include other people in, in what could be a very lonely process. So I just wanted to... Uh, to address that, that you really don't uh, have to do this. You can do this all by yourself. Like if that is, um, if you're the ultimate introvert, um, feel free to do all of this by yourself. But it's also okay to include um, people into the actual writing process. So not in the writing process as in, um, you can include people in your writing process by agree like uh, by uh, making the agreement with your spouse that I need to get this chapter done would you mind doing the dishes and bringing the kids to bed? That's also including them in the process. But how about actually including them in the actual writing process? So that is what I want to talk about. And there are multiple um, ways you can do that. Um, for example, one of my previous clients recently, I saw it on Facebook, that she asked her friends, um, who's who's available this Saturday uh, so we can go for tea and we can talk characters. Uh, she was writing, um, she, was, she, was, she was in the middle of writing something and she was like, I could really use some quality time with my, um, with my friends who of course these I'm assuming are her friends who enjoy uh, reading uh, to just sit um, and talk about characters. Like what do I do with this character? How can I maybe deepen this particular character? So I thought that was really a fun idea. Um, I have the same, like I have um, in my beta group, um, there are a lot of friends, like close friends as well, which is really fun um, because it was always a question for me whether they would be able to be critical and yes, yes, they can. They are very critical. Uh, but it was really, that's very useful, of course. Uh, but in the beginning it was, uh, are, they, are they up for this task? And they are. Uh, and they also do, most of them also uh, read the romance now as, as beta readers. So that's that's been really, really fun. Um, 
so I do it that way. So I, I just ask them particular questions uh, once they're done. Like, how do you feel about this character? I've been I've been wondering about this. Like, should I do this with this character? How do you feel? Like, now you read the book or this particular draft. How do you feel if I would do this uh, with this particular character? So it's very nice to have a sounding board. Like, that people who are invested in uh, in your in your work and in your characters. Um, so I like that. I like she she just said like on Facebook like okay so I, I want to have like a tea party uh, and I invite everyone who wants to because I need to brainstorm uh, about my characters. Uh, so I thought that was a really good idea. Uh, another idea that and Joe, like the thing is I was just up and about going through some of my boxes because I was looking for Braving the Wilderness by Brené Brown. I don't know if you've read it. Um, because I think that's the book in which she explains, like in the introduction, how that book came about, and I loved reading that. So it could be another one. I have all of her books, so it could be another. It could be another one of her books, but in, in at least one of the books. And I think it's *Braving the Wilderness*. Um, she talks about the fact that she had this idea in her head, like she knew what she wanted to write, but where to start. So what she did, I think she, and this is like I have a very. Um, I have an imagination, and and that's something that uh, my my family has always pointed out to me. That it's very uh, interesting how my mind works. So I can add details, and that's of course like you're, that's why you write because you can like your imagination goes wild. So I could have this wrong. If if you if you did read the book, you know what I'm talking about. Just just please correct me because I think that's actually the most fun part to see how my imagination uh, matches up with reality. Um, Oh, Sandra, you should. Uh, I'll I'll send you a message later with my favorites uh, because actually, Brave in the Wilderness is not their best one. So, um, but the introduction is really good. So, what she did um, is, and that's so. This is my my retelling of what she did. What she did was she rented like a cabin with some of her friends, and I think what she did for most of the weekend was just a jump around on the couch while, like blurting out ideas and what she wanted to say and then she had her friends take notes uh, while they sat around her like I think some of them were typing some of them were taking notes and then at the end of the weekend she gathered everything and then she got home and then she looked like she, she opened the computer spread out the notes and was just like so what do we got and then she had a book so I thought that was a really interesting way of, of including your friends uh, in the process as well. And of course, you need to have friends who are willing to do this with you. You need to have, like, don't force your friends or your family members um, to be part of the writing process. But if you do have a few who um, would like to get involved, this would be a really, really great way um, to do that, I would say. Um, because that sounded so much fun, and I actually recommended this uh, to one of my clients. I'm not sure, like I should, I, and I'm not sure whether I, uh, whether she actually did it, um, but I did. Like just, just if if there, if your head, like, and I can relate. Your head is so full, like you know what you want to say, but what is it exactly that you want to say? And then just you know, go out there, just tell your story, tell the story to other people and then see what they picked up on and see if you can like turn that into a book, see if there is a pattern, see if there are things that you can connect, uh, see what connections they saw as you were speaking. So I thought that was a really interesting um, interesting idea. So that is something you can do, you can brainstorm plot twists, um, character death, ev like anything with your friends, with your writing buddies, but also um, if you have friends, so this is a bit more, uh, slightly less involved in the actual writing process. But for example, uh, if you have friends who want to help out, maybe some of them dabble in photography and they can give you a really great headshot for your um, for your uh, website or for your Facebook uh, um, author profile. Um, of course, don't don't pull this lovely trick that a lot of people do is that if you have friends who are professionals or like uh, for instance freelance photographers and, and you try to get stuff for free, don't do that. Like they're worth their money, okay? You want people to pay for your books, so you pay people for their um, um, for their services, but if they if they offer or if they um, are just starting up and they need to build a portfolio or if they're just amateur photographers and they they make a mean picture, 
do it. Like ask, ask them for that. So that's a slightly less involved in the actual writing process. But these are things, if you have friends who are good copywriters, ask them to have a look at your, your jacket copy, the blurb. Uh, do something like that. There's so many ways. Uh, you don't need to do everything by yourself. Other people are good at, at different things. And together, I would say, um, I mean, they say it takes a village to raise a child, but it also takes a village to write a book. Like I know that from, um, I know that like firsthand experience. So many people are involved in in my fantasy book. Like so many people are already involved in in the romance that I'm now co-writing, but I don't even like I have a list somewhere. It's somewhere in a box. Um, there is a list of all the people who have been involved. Uh, in my fantasy thus far and I haven't even published it yet so imagine so it's not um, writing can be a lonely um, it can be very isolated it can be a very lonely job and some parts you do need to do by yourself um, you, you, some parts you do need to do I just see all your comments uh, uh, Sandra I will um, get back to you because um, I have to keep scrolling um, so you, this is the thing, like, uh, so I completely lost my my train of thought again. Yeah. So you can like this if you want if you want to be a writer if you like the isolated part that's fine. And you have to do some things. Like I cannot, for instance, I cannot write in a cafe. I cannot write with friends. Like I have to be um, in a space by myself when I'm writing. But the brainstorming part, yes, that I would, I love to do that with other people, and I love to get feedback, and I love to um, then talk about the feedback and see, you know, whether I can, you know, yeah, pull pull like some extra layers and and get really get into the story and and see how that uh, responds to my readership. So it can be lonely, but it doesn't have to be. You can do parts together. That's basically what I'm trying um, to say. Um, and I do like. If you, if you find those people, if you find those people who are ready to be involved in your writing uh, process, that's so much fun. And for me, actually, it was also um, one of the things is also that um, for years, and I talked about this before, I kept rewriting the first seven chapters. I never made it to the eighth chapter uh, until some of, one of my friends read it. Um, and she was like, you need to finish this. And then I started giving it like feeding chapter by chapter to another friend. And then that became my deadline because she kept texting me, where is the next chapter? So for me, I just sent her first drafts and she was really happy with it. And she gave me feedback on the spot. So that was really, uh, for, for accountability that really worked for me as well. So if you can do that, if you can find your cheerleader and no, this, this particular friend is not the most critical of my readers, but I, I have some other friends who are very critical readers, but having someone to cheer you on on the way, uh, just to keep you accountable, that's very useful as well. So there are so many ways that you can um, have people, your, your writing buddies, your friends, maybe family members, or really uh, enthusiastic readers or supportive of your writing uh, career. There are multiple ways to include people in the process, so it doesn't have to be that lonely. Um, and, you know, talking about things can actually really help you uh, figure things out, like for for your plots, for your characters, whatever you're working on. So it's really good to not do this all by yourself, uh, unless of course that's what you want. But it's it's not. My point is, it's not. It doesn't need to be lonely if you don't want it to be. Okay. So um, last Monday live from this very empty. Uh, desolate office and hopefully I'll see you all um, in about I'm, math is not my style it's not my thing in nine hours hopefully see you all in nine hours uh, when I talk to John Robin about the highs and lows of getting from that first draft to um, a published book and especially for those of you who are slower writers I think it's very useful to join us uh, because both John and I are slow, we're also both fantasy writers, John is an epic fantasy writer, um, and it can be like in this day and age where we have to push our work and have to publish as many books as we can per year, uh, uh, per year. it could be very useful uh, to talk a little bit to two people who are taking years to finish um, that project. So we'll be talking a little bit about that um, as well. So join us tonight, I'll add the link. Um, and I'll see you next week from a completely different location. Uh, I'm just fingers crossing because I know I'm spoiled, spoiled here with the internet in this country. I just hope that the internet is okay. But we'll see that next week. So drum rolls. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening.